Okay, let's talk about ratios and proportions. When we say the ratio of two numbers, let's say A and B, we can write this ratio as the following. We can write the ratio as A divided by B using what's called an obelus, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's O-B-E-L-U-S. It's similar to what obelus, obelus you find on money with the I in, in the pyramid. Uh, the next way you can write, uh, and method you can write a ratio is A over B with the solid line. This solid line is called a vinculum, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Look it up, and uh, uh, you can see, get the definition of it. And there's another line that's called a forward slash, which is called a solidus, S-O-L-I-D-U-S, I think it is. And then there's the colon. We can write odds. We can write odds and ratio and proportions it with the colon. Now, this is not odds. Odds are, is something different than writing ratios and proportions. If you're using odds, you will know it because the problem will state so. State so. Such as if you're at a racetrack, you know you're using odds. If you're at a racetrack, the, the odds are written the favorable favorable outcomes divided by the, by the unfavorable outcome of winning. And so uh, that's a different lesson in itself, uh, playing the horses. But anyway, this is how we can write ratios and proportions. We have uh, three methods, one, two, and three. The first method is elementary. And I haven't used that method in some 40 years. The reason why I say it's elementary is because it's only used in elementary schools. So uh, usually when I see someone use the obelisk, I'll call it, number one, I know they haven't taken any mathematics because people that take mathematics never use that. Okay, they use the dividing line. So, the solid line. To uh, use fractions or ratios. So, in uh, mathematics, we use the one and two here. Right here. Oh, oh one and two. I'm not drawing very well. Now, this number one is elementary, like I said. And it's used between, from first through sixth, seventh grade. And after seventh grade, within you take pre-algebra in seventh grade, and then eighth grade, you, and in ninth grade, you start algebra, math, which is mathematics. So you from first through seventh grade, you, you're learning arithmetic and then from 8th through 12th grade you're learning mathematics and what mathematics does is it allows you to make decisions with the arithmetic that you've learned okay so once you learn how to count from first grade through seventh grade uh, with with numbers then you use those numbers in mathematics to, to make decisions. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this. And uh, since this is on video, you can stop the video and come back at any time. And But I'm gonna walk you through this and we're gonna get to the good stuff at the end. But mathematics has rules and, and uh, it's like baking a cake. Anybody can bake a cake, but anybody can't be a baker because the baker follows rules. And once the baker gets accustomed to following the rules, he doesn't necessarily have has to use a measuring cup 
But those who's learning the rules in the beginning, they have to use a measuring cup because they're not familiar with the rules. But a baker that's been baking for some 30, 40 years, he doesn't have to use a measuring cup because he's accustomed to making those decisions. And that's the way you'll become in mathematics. You know, as you progress from eighth grade through 12th grade in college, in the university, in engineering or physics or whatever, you will become accustomed with these rules and you be good at it, you know, and uh, and you won't need the measuring cup. But right now, we have to learn the rules. We need the measuring cup. So let's uh, talk about the first part of ratios and proportions, and this talking about comparing ratios of the same quantities. Now, we use the ratio most of the time to compare two measurements, such as when I say that I'm six feet tall. I'm really comparing my height to a unit of measure of one foot when I say I'm six feet tall. In a ratio, this would be my height to a unit of measure, or it would be, it would be, six to one foot. Well, let me write that differently. Let me say six feet to one foot. If I said I'm six feet tall, I'm really comparing my height to a unit of measure. Now, I can write this as six feet colon to one foot, okay? And then if I divide both sides by one foot, then I have, continue on, that's what that means, I have six feet to one foot equals one. Okay, so when I say I'm six feet, I'm comparing my height to a unit of measure of one foot. Okay, and usually when I have a one down here in, in the denominator, I just leave it out and I just say I'm six feet tall. Okay. But suppose I was comparing my weight as a ratio to your weight. Well, that's a little different. So let's talk about that. So let's say my weight, my weight is equal to 275 and let's say your weight is equal to 220 pounds so the ratio of my weight to your weight is 275 pounds to 220 pounds. And you notice I got these units in here. We usually don't put the units in because we know what we're talking about. But I'm putting these units in because right now you need the measuring cup. And sometimes it's good to put the units in and so you can keep track of where you are. Okay? So, if that's my weight comparison to your weight. Okay? And if I write, we write this as 275 divide, uh, colon 220, and I divide both sides by 55, that comes out to 5 to 4. That's the ratio of my weight to your weight. 
Okay. So if I divide both sides by four, I get 1.25 pounds to one pound is equal to one. That's equal to my weight to your weight. That's the ratio. Okay. And what that says is I'm 1.25 pounds heavier than you. So what I can do is if I can say five over four and I wanted to determine let's say I wanted to, to determine uh, uh, your weight. I want to determine my weight. Well, here's my weight divided by your weight. And if I multiply that by 220 pounds, your weight, which is your weight, your weight cancel. And what I get is, I get is equal to five times 220 pounds divided by four, which is equal to five times 220 pounds divided by four is equal to 275 pounds, which is my weight. Because that's what I'm left up here, my weight. That's the unit I'm resulting in because your weight canceled out. So whenever we're comparing measurements of the same quantities, they must be in the same units. So pounds are compared to pounds, lengths are compared to lengths, and so forth. Okay? If you were to compare, let's say, let's erase this. Get rid of all of this and let's say if we wanted to uh, compare uh, one gallon to three quarts. Let's say one gallon to three quarts QTS. Okay. We couldn't say that one gallon is to three quarts, is proportional to three quarts, one to three, because that's not correct. The units are not the same. So what we would have to do is convert gallons to quarts or quarts to gallons. Let's convert quarts to gallons. Let's convert gallons to quarts. So we have gallons. Okay, I'll draw a line. How many quarts are in uh, one gallon? There's four quarts in one gallon. Notice here we have a fraction with the, un with the same units on top. Gallons cancel and we get four quarts or one times four, but one times four is four. So therefore the ratio, the proportion that we have Comparing gallons to quarts is four to three. So whenever you're comparing uh, proportion ratios of the same quantities, the units must be the same. 
Now, there's another comparison we can make of different quantities, okay? And we use different quantities every day, but you may not have realized it, but you do. Let's erase this and uh, look at some comparison of quantities that are different. We have 160 miles is to four hours. That's a comparison of uh, two ratios. Let's divide both sides by four hours. Hours cancel, four hours cancel. So that leaves us with 160 miles divided by four hours is equal to one. Well, if something is equal to one, you don't need the, the one there anymore, okay? So, uh, Now we have a ratio on this side. 160 miles divided by 4 hours is equal to 1. Let's divide 160 by 4. Well, that goes into, 4 goes into 160 40 times. So that's 40 miles per 1 hour. Okay, because 4 into 4, 1 time, 4 goes, in, 4 goes into 160 40 times. So that's, we don't need the one, we just put hours there. So that's 40 miles an hour. So if you travel 160 miles in four hours, you've essentially traveled 40 miles per hour. And how did we get that? Well, if we multiply, if we travel 40 miles per hour for four hours, Hours cancel, and we're left with 4 times 40, and the only units we have left is miles times miles. And that's equal to 160 miles. So we use proportions every day and we just don't realize it. There's one one other proportion I want to tell you about is um, is very neat and you've seen this before. So let's erase this and get back to this special proportion. Suppose you're driving along a road and you see a sign that says, this sign says, 4% grade ahead. What does that mean? Well, grade is is giving you the elevation of the road. That sign is giving a ratio of the road elevation. That sign is saying for one, for every 100 feet traveled horizontally, your car will rise four feet in elevation. This means rise over run. So we have grade, is equal to rise over run. And that's equal to grade is equal to vertical elevation
over horizontal. Right. Okay. And that's going to be equal to 4 over 100. 4 feet over 100 feet. 4 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.04. Okay. And to change that to percent, we move the decimal point over two places and we get 4%. So we have 4% grade. And that's a ratio. And what that says is, as you travel, I'm trying to draw it straight horizontal line here. That's not very good. If we travel One hundred feet in this direction and four feet in this direction. That's the elevation. And here's our car going this direction. Okay. And that's a ratio. Here's another ratio you might be familiar, you are familiar with, and you use every day. What is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter? So the ratio, circumference of a circle to its diameter is equal to what? Pi. And uh, we have a symbol for this ratio. It's called pi. And pi is equal to 3.141592 dot dot dot. And it continues on. Pi is a, an, an irrational number. And usually when we write a, a proportion, we're using rational numbers, integers, uh, one integer over another, okay? An integer, like three-fourths, is a rational number, okay? Pi is not a, a pi is an irrational number. So, okay. Let's solve some problems. Okay. Uh, let's solve some problems. Before I get to that, I'm on where I left off. I said uh, pi was a pi. The circumference of a circle to its diameter is pi. And I said pi is an irrational number. Uh, there is no, you, there's, there is no ratio that you can write for pi because in order to write a ratio, you had to have one integer over another. A close approximation of a ratio for pi is 22 sevenths. And that's equal to 3 and this is not pi, this is only correct up to two digits, okay. So this is a close approximation as a ratio for pi. So I wanted to let you know that pi is an irrational number. If you have an irrational number, you can't write it as a ratio of two integers, okay. Just wanted to let you know that. 
Okay, let's um, solve some problems. And I wanted to solve a problem. The reason why I said solve some problems because I wanted to show you how you use this change in units. So let's say we're in a car and we're traveling 50 miles per hour. 50 miles per hour. Okay, that's our ratio. What is the speed in feet per second? Feet per second. How fast are we traveling in feet per second? Okay. So I want to show you how to do that. We have 50 miles per hour. Draw a line, vertical line, and a horizontal line. We're trying to cancel these out, and we're trying to end up with feet per second units, okay? So what we say is one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Okay, miles cancel. Okay. Now we got to get get rid of hours. So hours is in the denominator, so we have to have hours in the top. So what is one hour? One hour is thirty six hundred seconds. Hours cancel, and that's equal to. So that's equal to 50 times 5,280 feet, because all the other units canceled out. Feet divided by 3,600 seconds. And that's equal to 73 and one-third feet per second. Let's say you're traveling in a car 60 miles an hour. 60 miles per hour. 5,280 feet equals one mile. Miles cancel. One hour is 3,600 seconds. Hours cancel. That's equal to 88 feet per second. What does that mean, 88 feet per second? When you're traveling 60 miles per hour, your wheels are traveling 88 feet per second. That's why when you're driving and if you take your eyes off the road for two seconds, you're traveled feet, 88 feet per second times two seconds seconds cancel and you've your car has traveled 176 feet that's why it says it's dangerous to take your eyes off the road while you're driving what that means is that if there's a car in front of you 30 feet in front of you and you take your eyes off the road for two seconds and you're traveling 60 miles an hour. That means in two seconds you will travel 176 feet. If that car is 30 feet in front of you and it all of a sudden hits its brakes, you'll travel 176 feet before you realize it. So... That's why you shouldn't take your road, eyes off the road. Okay, let's solve 
another problem, a very special problem. Now we're going to get into the good stuff with ratios and proportions. Okay. Okay. We have a problem here. Let's see what this problem states. Two boys divide $4.20 in the ratio of 5 to 2. How much money does each boy receive? Now, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to walk you through this, but I'm walking you through this to show you how to solve a much bigger problem. And this is just a little problem, but I'm showing you this little problem so I can show you how to solve a much bigger problem. Okay, so let's see how much each boy receives. So, the ratio of each boy is 5 to 2. And they're going to divide $4.20. Okay. Now, remember when I said that the units must be the same for the ratios. Okay. So let's set this up as a proportion. Here is the ratio of the division of money. Let's set this up as a proportion. So you take these two ratios, this ratio here, right here, and you add them. Okay? And that's five, six, seven. So okay. Now we're gonna say five to two. And this ratio we're going to say is boy one. This is boy two. We call that boy two. And this is boy one. Okay. And that's going to be in our dollars. Okay. So let me put a dollar sign here. Okay. That's how much they're going to receive. So. First, we take the ratio and we add them up. That comes up to seven. Okay. So, let's find out how much boy one receives. So, we're going to divide this ratio up in parts to a whole. So, we have boy one part and boy two part. Okay. So, boy one part is five and the whole is what? Seven. Okay, that's the ratio, boy one in the ratio to the whole of the ratio. Now, when you set two ratios equal to each other, you have a proportion. So, here we have how much boy one is going to receive and how much boy two is going to receive. So, right now we're working with the ratio of boy one to the part to the whole. So we take boy one receives in dollars, the part boy one receives in dollars, to what is the whole? Well, the whole is $4.20. So the whole is $4.20, okay? Now if we multiply both sides by $4.20, times five divided by seven is equal to boy one in dollars, his part. Okay, so boy one dollars and he receives is four dollars and 20 cents times five divided by seven. And that's equal to, get out your trusted calculator and multiply it by 4.2 times 5 divided by 7, and that comes out to $3. Now look at how this is set up, this equation is set up. We have boy 1 is equal to $4.20 times 5, that's the part he receives in the ratio, in the ratio divided by the whole 
of the ratio. So therefore, we know that boy two receives $4.20 times, what is his part? Two. So we put two here. And what is the whole of the ratio? Seven. And we put seven there. And that's equal to $1.20. So therefore, boy one receives $3. Boy two receives $1.20. For a total of four dollars and twenty cents. Isn't that neat? You find this on examinations. Like if you go take a test for a job, employment test, you find these ratios on those tests. Because people want to know if you know how to use a ratio, okay? Let's solve another problem. Okay, here's our problem. Uh, you need to purchase fertilizer for your lawn. You've been told that your lawn requires 60 pounds of nitrogen to be correctly treated. In the store, you only see bags of fertilizer that contain three parts nitrogen, two parts potash, and two parts phosphate by weight. How many pounds of this mixture should you purchase to get 60 pounds of nitrogen? The ratio is 3 to 2 to 2. This is given on the fertilizer bag. Okay, so we have a ratio that's given, 3 to 2 to 2. And we have a problem that we're trying to solve. We're trying to determine how many pounds of, a, of this mixture is part of the total. So what we do is, we set these two ratios equal to each other. And when we do that, we have a proportion, okay? So let's do that. So our first, our ratio is three to two to two. And if we add those up, we get three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So our first ratio, we're given. And the first part is three to two to two. This is phosphate, called pH. This is potassium, a potash. And the first part is nitrogen. So we'll set these three up as ratios, parts to the whole. So the nitrogen is three parts to the whole of seven. Okay, that's the part of nitrogen. Nitrogen is the part of the whole, and this is the total. Okay, and I'm going to write this out for now. And we're looking for how many parts of nitrogen. Well, we're given the part here of 60. 60 parts of nitrogen to the whole of what? Well, we don't know because we don't know how big the bag is. So we have to, uh, we'll call this X total, okay? So now we multiply both sides of this by X total times three over seven is equal to 60 over XT times XT. Oh, XT is canceled. We both multiply both sides by XT. And we get 3 times XT divided by 7 is equal to 60. And then we multiply both sides by 7. Both sides by 7. And the 7s cancel. So we get 3 x T is equal to 60 times 7. And then we divide both sides by 3. 
three is cancel and we get XT is equal to 60 times 7 divided by 3 and if we break out our trusty calculator we get 60 times 7 divided by 3 is equal to 140 pounds. So XT is equal to 140 pounds. So what that says is our part of 60 pounds of nitrogen is contained in a total bag of weight of 140 pounds. Okay? So now let's see how much potash we have. Okay. Well, we look at our ratio here and for the nitrogen we had 3 7. So for the potash we have 2 over 7. So there's 2 parts potash to the 7 whole is equal to how many parts of potash? Well, we don't know because in the nitrogen, we were given a part, but in potash, we're not given a part. So we would call that, what, XPO. What's the total that contains the part of potash? Well, the total is 140 pounds, which we calculated with the nitrogen. So that's 140 pounds, okay? Now, when we do the same thing, we multiply both sides by 140. We have 140 times 2 over 7 is equal to XP, XPO divided by 140 times 140. 140s cancel. And we get X potash is equal to 140 times 2 divided by 7. And if you break out your trusty calculator, calculate 140 times 2 divided by 7, you get 40 pounds. So our calculations say the amount of potash contained in the 140 pound bag of fertilizer is 40 pounds. And we look for the phosphate. Well, the phosphate is 2 also. So we know that the phosphate is equal to 2 times 140 divided by 7 is equal to 40 pounds. Because the ratio for phosphate is 2 also. And this is the ratio we set up for phosphate, which was 2. So we just do the same thing and it's, it comes out to the same equation. So... Uh, if we take those total weights we calculated, the weight of the nitrogen is equal to 60 pounds. The weight of the phosphotash is equal to 40 pounds. And the weight of the phosphate in down fertilizer is 40 pounds. And we add those up, 60 and 40 is 140 is 140 pounds total. And so, what that says is to get the required 60 pounds of nitrogen, according to this ratio, we would have to purchase a 140 pound bag of fertilizer. And the bag may not be sold in 140 pounds. It may be sold in 35 pound bags. Well, then you gotta buy four pound, four bags of the 35 pound bag. You know, so, that's cool. And that's how you solve those. Now, let's solve another problem that's uh, going to show us, that's really a doozy, and it's going to show us how to really use this, how useful this, this, these ratios and proportions are. Okay, here's the problem. You are a painter. And while leaving your referral card in the local grocery store, a gentleman strikes up a conversation with you concerning painting his home. He states that he has a large home and boathouse. 
he would like everything painted to the ratio of two to three to five to four to six by gallons of paint. And he has determined that over the years, only 25 gallons of paint is required for the entire job. He will pay you $8,000 and he will purchase the paint required. You are to determine how many gallons of each color paint to purchase. He gives you the following details concerning the job. The ratio is two to three to five to four to six and is two parts white, three parts lavender, four parts, five parts eggshell, four parts tan, six parts sky blue. He requires that his kitchen and bathrooms be painted white, the den painted lavender, the bedrooms painted eggshell, the car garage painted tan, and his boathouse and game room painted sky blue. Now, it is up to you to determine how many gallons of paint are required according to his ratio to be purchased, okay? Let's see how we would do that. Let's give ourselves a little more room here and see what we can do. Okay, let's start out with the first, the first uh, paint, which is white. That's the first in the ratio. Okay, let's start to set that up to parts to the whole. Okay, so for the white paint, we're gonna have we're gonna have two is to what? Well, we add these up in the ratio. Two to three is five. Five is ten, and four is fourteen, and six is twenty. So the ratio of white is in parts to whole is two to twenty. Okay. And how much white is required? Well, I don't know. So we have to set that up as uh, white is to, that's the part. How much is the whole? Well, the whole was given in the problem as 25 gallons. So it's 25. So therefore, we multiply both sides by 25 and we get 2 is to 20 as W is to 25. We multiply both sides by 25. 25 is cancel and we get W is equal to 2 times 25 divided by 20. And that should give us our white part that's needed. Okay, and we're going to do that for the rest of the ratio. So we have white paint is equal to 2 times 25 divided by 20. And that's equal to whatever that is. Okay, then what's our next part? Okay. Our next one is lavender. Let's call that L. So lavender is, which is three in the ratio. So that's three over 20 times 25. And what's the next one? Eggshell. So let's call that E G E S. So E S is what? Five. So we have five over 20 times 25. And that's equal to and what's the next one? Tan. Tan is what? Four. So we call that tan is equal to four over 20 times 25. Okay. And what's the next one? That's the last one is sky blue. And call that SB. And it's equal to what? Last is six. So that's six divided by 20 times 25. Okay, and that's equal to. Okay. Now, over here, we're going to have the paint required. So the paint required is white, and that's going to be equal to, that's going to be lavender, and that's going to be equal to, that's going to be eggshell, 
and that's going to be equal to 10, and that's going to be equal to in sky blue. And that's going to be equal to, okay. And then we'll have a total of paint required. Okay, so break out our trusted calculator and come on over here and do our calculations. We have 2 times 25 divided by 20 is equal to 2.5 gallons. Okay, then we have the next one is 3 times 25 divided by 20 is 3.75 gallons. And then our next one is 5 times 25 divided by 20 is 6.25 gallons. And 10 is 4 times 25 divided by 20 is 5 gallons and the last one is sky blue that's 6 times 25 divided by 20 is 7.5 7.5 gallons So we have a total of, for white, we have two, 2.5 gallons. For lavender, we have 3.75 gallons. For eggshell, we have 6.25 gallons. For tan, we have five gallons. And for sky blue, we have 7.5 gallons. And we break out our trusted calculator. And we have 2.5, 2.5 plus 3.75 plus 6.25 plus 5 plus 7.5 comes to a total of 25 gallons as he stated in the requirements above and it looks like we've just earned eight thousand dollars and this is what we tell the gentleman the paint is required that he and this is what we tell the gentleman that he's re the paint that's required that he must purchase uh, 25 gallons a paint with the white, the lavender, eggshell, tan, and sky blue. That's the required gallons of 25 gallons as he stated. And that's about it. I hope you've learned something. Thank you. And see you next time.